It's that time of year again, a little holiday we like to call Christmaca. So please enjoy this never before seen or heard bonus content from Welcome to the OC Bitches with Michael Cassidy. We'll be back in January with more content and the official launch of Beyond the OC. So please go to the show notes below and click the link to vote for your top favorite 50 episodes of all time of the OC. And Merry Christmaca. Okay, we have voicemails for Michael Cassidy on our bonus content. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Michael of the podcast. Um, Just had a question for all of you guys, really. Um, Following on from Ben's tweet about um, the the OC characters, you know, hypothetically staying at the White Lotus, (sighs) what do you envision would happen or a, a plot line for each of your characters and who would die? Love the podcast. Bye. So, so Ben McKenzie tweeted. Somebody else tweeted, send these people to a White Lotus. It was a picture of us, the cast of the OC, and it said, send these people to the White Lotus. It was a Lotus. comedian that tweeted it, right? And it, it was a trend. People were s- sending different characters from different shows, and Ben wrote, let's do this. Yeah. I mean, I think Zach, as a character on the White Lotus, <laughs> would be the surprise killer at the end. And oh, he'd be like, what, what is going on? I just want to get a tan. And then he'd be like, oh my God, he did it. I have seen first the whole thing show. I, That's the first thing you thought that yeah. you are the killer. Yeah, because it's always. But who do you kill? Oh, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that one coming. <laughs> D- done in the, yeah, you done did. In the <laughs> Done in the drawing room. <laughs> oh my God. With the pearl necklace Clue. on. Oh, look oh out, my God. Look out. Wow, that was a really interesting. You know, I feel like. We should go to the White Lotus. And I feel like somehow Marissa needs to be there. Yeah. Oh, that's the interesting thing. To I do. mean, okay. Yeah. Well, that's that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what Julie would be doing. She'd be like Jennifer. Julie Clooney. would be, be at the red spa. Herring. Julie would be the one you assume did it for the good, solid part of the oh, mystery, right. right? Okay. She'd be like acting strange and not have a good alibi and tons of motive. Because she's got, she's hanging out with Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Carmack would be back there. <laughs> I have not seen the um, first season of White Lotus, only like the first really? couple episodes. So mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure what it all means. Okay, well, you should definitely watch I'm it. Gonna, it's, um, it's in my queue. Thank you for the question. Hey, OC bitches. Love the show. My name is Sonia. Huge fan. Uh, my question is for Michael. Michael, if the show continued on for a couple more seasons, where would your character be? Thank you, guys. Love the show. Thank you. I think I got this the last time and I gave kind of like an embarrassingly weird, dark answer. But well, let's I, be more even more embarrassing. Should I be even more? Yes. Sex worker. Well, I was thinking Caitlyn Jenner. You're a murderer. Like, Caitlyn Jenner. You're like you're wearing worker? a pearl necklace. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's all you have on. Um, I, I think that I said this last time. I, I think that the, 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 um, arc that Zach was on when he left the show (laughs) was the arc directly to lame white rich guy. Mm. Like, I just think it's hard for me to picture him being anything. What do you mean you started Marvel? Remember? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I had something better. I should have thought of this. Yeah, you Um, really should have been prepared. Yeah, I should have. I shouldn't have wasted all that time watching this horribly sad episode of television. (laughs) I should have just thought about myself and my character. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you can expand on on this white guy. Well, you guys help me out. What would Zach be doing? Well, I told you. you No, he would have. uh, What was the name of the company that you sold the um, Atomic Uh, County to? uh, Or George Lucas. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, did he just like advise us and help us out? No, he like bought it and he's like, I'm going to turn it yeah. into things. Cause yeah, because Seth says he gave it, yeah, I gave it to Zach and he gave it to George Lucas. Yeah, I think Zach is like a super is producer. Is he at, at ILM, Industrial Light yeah. and Magic? Yeah, he's at ILM and he's making, he's he's the guy who hires J.J. Abrams to make the newest Star Wars movie. Oh, okay. Movie. That's how he's big that of a guy. deal he is, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yep. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm from Toronto. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for doing such an amazing podcast. 
The OC is my favorite show of all time. I've been watching it since I was 12. And it's so great to relive it again through this podcast and having inside scoop on each episode. My question is for Michael. I would love to know if there's a particular scene while playing Zach where you would have to redo it over and over again because you would just keep cracking up and laughing all the time and it would just become a blooper over and over again. So I would love I would love to know which scene had you laughing the most. Anyways, thank you guys. Thank you, Sarah, first of all. I think we kind of already said this when I was on the show before, yeah. but pretty much every scene I'm in has to be done over and over and over and yep, over again. I can attest to that. And that's but that's but the not... Vespa takes the cake. Well, that was because you guys were laughing, or he, were you laughing? No. Well, mostly because I'm not very good at acting. I'm actually a much better <laughs> podcast guest than I am an actor. <laughs> However, but um, but the Vespa was we were a wreck for the Vespa. Yes. We were a wreck. Um, and I imagine if I went back and watched the gnocchi stuff because I was so afraid uh, to say the word, to touch the things, to really do anything, to be wearing the hat, everything involved in it, that I would look like a person who <laughs> had never been in a kitchen before. <laughs> like, I, Have you ever, there, there are scenes that they give us that are prop heavy, yeah, action prop, heavy, always. and, and, in those instances, I've learned, like, I have to take it upon myself to, like, rehearse it the day before Over. or find out. Yes, yes. Because we're, and they give you, like, what, 15 minutes to figure out what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, like, it gets very, very distracting. So I can understand that, yeah. I also have this sort of, like, sad inside baseball answer to this, which is that I learned later in my career after working on this show that my willingness to be cracked up by myself or my scene partner while very fun was made the day longer yeah. and made my work less good. Yeah. And I, I learned don't it, know if I agree with well, that. Well, there's a few exceptions. Like there are fun shows where like I want Adam to be trying to make me laugh, for right. example, like right. we were talking about earlier, because everything's going to be better if that's the case. Yeah. Right. But it's not necessarily going to be better if I'm trying to make Adam laugh. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not Adam Brody. Right. So like, I did this hospital show more recently, but a while ago, and the the people who played the leads on that show never cracked up to based on what I saw, and they had to, they learned the terminology and they did the like life saving simulation stuff, and they learned it on the day. The nurse would be like this, 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 and this, and then the doctor would come in and be like, and you would also do this, this, and this. The consultants on set, and then the, it would be just a dummy there, and then they would roll on the master the first shot. And those guys were, like, saving this dummy's life right in front of me. And I was just, like, handing them shit. And the whole time I was thinking, like, no one's making any jokes. And I realized, like, it's not – first of all, it's obviously not funny. Like, it's not going to make it in the cut of the show. But, like, there's no actor in here who's just like, oh, man, I accidentally cut his lip off or some dumb thing that I would say. Right. And I was like, because that would be distracting. Like, yes, the job right. is already hard enough. Don't right, make right. it harder. Well, you probably don't want to do that when it's, like, literally saving someone's life on a table. Yeah, but it was just a dummy. It was still just TV. No, and, and <laughs> I mean, when there's – obviously, when it's there's drama, obviously the biggest bloopers are going to come from con – comedy or comedic scenes i think so. yeah yeah it's yeah but we i mean i i i laughed oh i only laughed on this job like i just i so anyway all the italy stuff that whole italy episode was like just a murderer's row of stuff that i was either nervous i was quite entertained or, i know you ate it up i yeah i was not uh convincing for that matter, in that episode, which kind of worked out narratively. Yes. And there's, I mean, I'm sure there were more than what's what's out there, what's available, but there are bloopers on yeah. YouTube. And there's like some some with you guys in like the comic book club. And yep. there's quite a few of those. Yes. So yep. he, he, he laughed all the time. I laughed so all the time. Great question. Thank it's you. Very, he's very hard to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Melinda, Rachel, and Michael. Um, this is Tamiri speaking all the way from Brazil. Ooh. And um, first of all, I just wanted to say how happy and excited I am that Michael's back. Uh -huh. um, and I really believe that you should develop another podcast. You know, <laughs> you should host another <laughs> podcast. And Michael should be, like he has to be, the third co-host. I mean, how perfect would that be? I think we're all waiting for that. Um, <laughs> That's what anyways, everybody's waiting for. <laughs> um, I actually have two questions for you. Uh, first one is for Michael. Um, 
What are your fondest, craziest, funniest, anything worth sharing memories of working in BOC? And girls, what are your fondest, craziest, or whatever <laughs> memories of working with Michael in Aww. the sex at BOC? <laughs> Thank you very much. Love you and love the show. Bye. Did Aww. I get to ever do a scene with you? Uh, we were at the same dances kind of situation, but never, no, yeah, we definitely we never did not. got to talk to yeah, each other. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. I want to say something. Yeah. I know I give you a hard time all the time. Yeah. But you were probably my favorite, like, person that I worked with, <laughs> co star. I mean, That's very you nice. know, Adam was my boyfriend, like, whatever. We'll just, like, leave him out of it. But, but you did like me more than him, even. But I did. Yeah, yeah. But I did Lock like you. But it was a pleasure. But, um, I was, like, higher on the totem pole. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> It would have been inappropriate for you to say it at the time because I basically worked for you personally. Yeah, I understand what no, you're saying. No, but honestly, you were Michael, like... You her character. Yes. yes, he was. But we had so much fun. It was oh, so yes. much fun to work with so you. So much fun. And I, giving you a hard time, it's really, it's just a show of love and appreciation. I appreciate that. You know that. what? You're that welcome. right there just describes what you were describing about your hospital show. I've done that on shows, but... It so is exactly describes what I remember about the show, yeah. how much fun it was, what yeah. a fun atmosphere it was. Obviously, yeah. we'd have serious moments and serious scenes, but mm -hmm. for the most part, let's have fun. So that's a great description and if, yeah. um, to convey that to you guys. That's Michael basically was the epitome of of the fun that we had on set. Yes. I was like, it's like bring your dog to work day. You know, somebody's <laughs> got just like a fun golden that's retriever. Felt, that's right. Yeah. That's how yeah. I felt. Yeah. yeah, that was me for Aww. part of season two. <laughs> and what was your best moment? Was her other question? Well, I my favorite story to tell, and I tell this to uh, when I teach acting, I tell this story. I, and I, I I'm pretty sure I told it on the show, so maybe I should quick come up with something else. But when I was supposed to kiss you on my first day yeah. of work, yeah, yeah, I told that story. Okay, I mean that that to me is like the most like. I couldn't get my face close enough to actually even do it. Like, I could not <laughs> operate my body. I was so nervous. Uh, and I, I just, I think that's really funny now. But at the time, it was like... But you were so grateful it was me. A, totally. How yeah, do you teach super, that? super really awkwardly attracted to you. And <laughs> no. Wet, wet. How do you use that <laughs> teaching actors? Well, I, I more or less, when I talk to actors about stuff like that, I say, you know, I don't necessarily know how you should deal with this. But you should know that you have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's not an option to not deal with it. Right. I had great acting teachers who would say things like, if you feel like laughing, laugh. If you feel like looking down at the script, have it nearby so that you don't feel like the, sc the scene is going to come to an end. Mm. And at the time, I was like, that was counterintuitive because I thought I was, I was training these theater scenes in these theater scene study classes for these theater acting tr teachers. But in hindsight, for filming, it would have been fine. You know, how many times you work with somebody who's like trying to remember the line instead of just like, Looking, I mean, I would rather if if you struggle with memorization, I would rather have you look down for every single line and then come up and say it authentically in the moment. You mean in the scene, have the script? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. not? Why oh, not? if it's up here, why not? Yeah, oh. because it's the the sort of like I guess the underpinning of that opinion and conversation that I'm trying to have when I bring it up is that the shame around the failure is way more potent and work reducing than just fixing the problem. Oh, yeah. No, when you feel like I can't screw up or I'm going to get fired. That kind it. of thing. Well, but then if you let yourself get into your head too, too much, it's but but I, I do think, obviously, if you want to become an actor, you need to learn how to memorize dialogue. But, Absolutely. But not. But we all go up and say, what's that line? But, yeah. but that's when you learn the technicality of we're rolling and I can and I say I'm having a dialogue with you and I say, what's my line? Say it. Pause. You say it yep. because they can edit it. That's right. You, you have to be able to go in and out of that and be proficient like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. What was it like getting to play opposite um, the OC girls? And if Michael replays, Michael Cassidy replays those scenes in his head. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty open about the fact that I was very nervous to be on the show. Uh, and was it like to work? I, I don't have a memory of, <clears throat> I mean, obviously most of my materials with you, Rachel, and we had a good time. Um, and I did my best with what you brought. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, and I'm sorry that it wasn't enough. Um, but I, yeah, I loved it. I, I did. I wasn't around Misha very much. She was off doing something else and we were with Adam and you. Mm -hmm. Um, but I loved it and I was super intimidated. Um, and the more I was sort of around the show, the more I sort of like very, 
late realized how big of a deal it was to be on the show. And it didn't, it did the opposite of making me feel comfortable. Really? There were a lot of days where I would work, work a day and then go home to like voicemails or I would go somewhere and someone would recognize me. And it was, all of that was so new to me that I was like, I would spend my three days off after that sort of like sleeplessly realizing what it was that I was doing. And then it would take me half a day back on set to remember that I was there doing the thing that I was actually good at. But all the stuff that takes place outside of that feels impossible to deal with Mm. uh, or felt impossible to deal with at the time. I feel like it's always nervous to start something, but Mm. but it gets better. But you're telling me it. it Well, I I started to feel like an outsider, like I would go somewhere and somebody would be like, oh, you're on that thing. And I'd be like, yeah. And then they'd be like, what's so and so like? And Uh, I'd be like, well, I just worked with them for six months before I realized you stranger would know who they are. Yeah. And who, who I am. And so now I'm thinking about you in my weird hotel room that I'm staying at down the street. You know, like I'm not thinking about the circumstances or the stuff, whatever the stuff is that right. I would use yeah. to yeah. prepare. I remember, I think I've told this story before that um, I heard um, Ernie, my ex-husband, on the t- say, my, this person said, that's Julie Cooper. And he goes, that's my wife. And he goes, she goes, how's that? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like... Well, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. they think you're that. You're thinking, yeah. yeah, they think yeah. you're that. And character. that's the first thing that pops into my head when I get questions like that: is what was it like to work with those uh, OC girls? Because there was an association with them that I didn't have, right? And I, t- to this day, don't have oh, about Rachel or Misha. That, yeah, that's right. That they are whatever. I don't have that association because they were coworkers first, right? And always, yeah, right. Yeah, it was a very professional set. Super professional. I mean, I don't. I well shows. Well, yeah, I thought of a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nothing ever gets done unless everyone's doing their job. So right. Yeah, yeah it was but- professional enough. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Okay. Hi, I love the podcast, and my question for Michael is: Would you consider doing another show with Rachel? Because you have such good chemistry together. No. And what would you like the premise of that show to be? <laughs> okay. So I, I probably I thought yep. about this a lot, actually. <laughs> I, have, I oh. thought about this a lot specifically in the last like six months since I was first on the show. <laughs> I think Rachel and I, my dream, my absolute. <laughs> this is I, oh, This God. makes me so happy. My teeth hit the microphone. My <laughs> dream is that you and I play two of the best surgeons who have ever, <laughs> okay, who have ever picked up a fucking scalpel, okay? And that we are so good at it because for one reason only, there is no circumstance <laughs> where you would be comfortable in that situation and I would love it so much to just watch you suffer every single day. Oh while you're like, God. okay, let's get the cranial L4 in here and the blah, blah, blah. And I would just be like, she said all of that wrong. I would love it. I would love it so much. Just I've to got, I swear her. to God. I would just, it would make me so happy. You're such an asshole. I am. I, I am. That is forever and always my connection. That is my nightmare. Connection. It is. That is my nightmare. I know. So Ooh. holler at us. We're both available. <laughs> Two of the best brain surgeons oh anyone has ever seen. But just the, like, we got to get this honestly, guy's brain out of here and put it into this head. At, like, like, out of anything you could have said, <laughs> never in a million years would I thought it was that. And never in a million years could it have been more perfect because you know that would be absolute torture. It would be torture. Uh, part of the reason that you and I have such good rapport, I'm convinced, is because we are very similar, actually. That is frightening. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? But, but, so I, I, am, I am aware of the things that you would not want to do because yeah, I, know. too, would not you, want yeah, to do Yeah, I know. It would be awful. But I we will do a medical though. show. I will do a medical yeah, show. Yeah, but on that, that note, hand me the scalpel. Yeah, absolutely. She doesn't have to be there, but she can be if she wants to be. I'm available to play a You doctor. know, we would be really fun surgeons. Yes. We would, it'd be a hoot. It would be a hoot. But you'd have you'd to wear, just wait You'd have a different so hat. <laughs> no, terminology. I had to, even when I had to do terminology on Heart of Dixie, I played doctor. You know what? I knew that. In your cold garage, that is your next series. Okay, you great. You have a look. <laughs> That's great. We can I do had the to podcast say the things. together for Heart of Dixie. You know what? And I say a lot of medical things. You, you will do? Be amused. How oh was my that? God. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> How, I mean, awful. I want to see it. <laughs> Just I have for that. Techno, for that techno for babble sure. is difficult. Yeah. But I would always fight for, I, I need at least four days with it. I yeah. can't wow. do it the night before. I need four solid, uninterrupted days. Wow. 
at least, if yeah. not two weeks. Yeah. That I makes it really it. good. It's just time. Oh. Yeah, time. So you could do it. I, mean, I got you. I do. I've done it. Yeah. I definitely didn't take four days with it. Like, it was literally right before. And <laughs> oh, my God. It's very apparent. <laughs> I don't get That's difficult as you get older. But that sounds fun. I thought you were going to go, like, a serial killer way or something. No. Where you have to, like, kill me. Oh, <laughs> That's so on the nose, though. No, I, I want it's a little you to too be like, obvious. I, we do twenty five obvious. episodes a year, you and I, for like eighteen <laughs> years of just like, oh my god, we, we got to fuse his his craniology into his. Listen, pass the defibrillator. Defi- yeah. I can't even say it. Pass the defibrillator. Yeah, De- is Grey's Pass-lid. Anatomy kind of defibrillator? It's, it's mixed. It's mixed. It's, it's not. like super soapy, and also yeah, yeah there's yeah. some there's some issues. I really, am, you know what? I appreciate your pitch, even though. You're trying to take me down. I still appreciate it. I know. It. You're trying to torture her. That's like. I appreciate it. And you know what, Michael? I would work with you every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would have a great we time. We would have a great time. Yeah. On that note. On that note, thank you so much for your questions. And thank you so much for being here for the bonus content. We love you. And if you want more questions answered, just leave them at the speak pipe link. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Free balling. Bye, bitches. You can say that too. Bye, bitches. Thank you so much for listening. Please follow, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And stay tuned for Beyond the OC episodes and the new YouTube channel coming soon to you in January 2024. It's all the OC all the time. Bye, bitches.